So, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the final session of the day. I'm not even sure whether this is on. Can you hear me at the back? Yeah. Fine, good. Um, I'm Stella Collins. I've got the pleasure to host um, Rob Hubbard and LAS. Uh, Your LAS Solutions, aren't you? Just LAS. Just LAS, yeah. LAS, LAS yeah. today. Um, he's going to be sharing some really interesting stuff around induction, and I know you're going to get lots of chance to participate and do stuff. Before we start with, with Rob, and Rob's going to introduce himself properly and explain exactly what everything's about, um, I want you to think about this bridge that Don was talking about earlier on. And just have a moment or two thinking about what do you want, you know, what, why have you come to this session? What are you planning on getting out of it? You may get something entirely different out of it, and that's equally fine, but just think, what are you kind of looking for in terms of getting something out of the session? and then spend 30 seconds telling the person next to you. So a moment or two to reflect what you're going to get, and then tell the person next to you. And we might want to hear a couple of them. OK, so you've had a few minutes chatting. Is anybody brave enough to tell us what they think they would like to get out of today? Who's going to tell us what they think they'd like to get out of? Thank you. Yeah, I'd just like to get some new and interesting ways to deliver our existing induction okay. using digital technology, see what I have to say. All right, that's very good. Nice Should we do that? Else? Brilliant. Anything different? I was, I was sent by a French delegate who so doesn't um. speak good enough English, ah. and she's looking for really good innovations that work, and she wants okay. practical examples. So I said I'd come to the session and find out for her and report okay. back to Paris. Okay. <laughs> very good. One more? Somebody else who's come for something. Thanks. Um, so at Direct Line Group, we're running a speech competency project where we're reviewing all of our inductions end to end. Some of these are like 12, 13 weeks long where you're sat in a classroom. Mm. So really it's about how do we get people more confident, quicker, ready to take their first live call. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to briefly introduce Tess Robinson, who's also going to be helping Rob out today yep. in one of the exercises. Tess will be coming around and badgering you in the uh, activity, so she's very good at that. Uh, well, thanks everybody for coming along. It's the last session of the day, and um, we're going to be um, doing loads of stuff and working together. So it's great that lots of you have come uh, to learn some more ideas and generate ideas around induction. That's kind of part of the idea. The other part of the idea is around um, sharing some of our um, digital learning innovation process with you and actually getting to experience part of that. So I hope this will be a bit of a kind of win-win in that uh, you'll kind of learn how to apply some innovation ideas, parts of innovation ideas to other projects. And I hope we'll also generate a whole load of really great ideas for how we can improve induction for, for everybody. Um, so just to uh, give you a brief introduction to uh, LAS. So we've been around uh, for about 15 years now. We tend to work with these kind of organizations, and we tend to work on their kind of uh, the, the projects that really matter. So the, we work on things like um, childhood obesity, um, things like digital transformation, uh, things like reimagining uh, compliance and making it more human-centered. And we've had quite a lot of success in, in doing that um, over the years. Um, and the reason that I think we've done that is because of the approach that we take to design, which is the kind of uh, innovative, uh, sort of innov an innovation process. So that's what we're going to be doing a, a bit of today. So what we help to achieve, as I mentioned, we're going to experience part of an innovation process. Um, the reason I've asked you all to be in uh, an even number on a table is we're going to do some rapid user research around induction. We're then going to kind of analyze and pull that data and use another data source from outside of the room to kind of combine uh, into that and hopefully generate some insights um, into how induction may be improved. Um, and then from those insights, I hope that we'll generate a whole bunch of ideas. They tend to come, if you've got the insights, the ideas tend to come quite naturally. And the trick is to do the research up front so that you've got enough data and you've immersed yourself such that those insights will come. So obviously, we've got a really short session here today. Usually, these things take you know, se several hours to do properly if you're doing it in a workshop environment. But 
on bigger projects, this is stuff you do over weeks and months engaging with hundreds of people. But I hope that I can give you a kind of a bit of a snapshot while we're here. And we'll, we'll refine some ideas. And what I'd like us to do as well is to share this all digitally as we work. So we've done a bit of pre-work for this to kind of gather the data. And um, we're going to be kind of capturing the things that you guys are all coming up with so that hopefully, at the end of it, we've got a useful kind of document, a blog posting or something, with the process that we followed, the research that's been done, the insights that have come from you guys, the ideas that you've come up with as well. So that will be kind of published and available for everyone. So we hope it kind of works out that way. So what do we need for success? <laughs> so a curious mind, first of all, is most important when it comes to design and, and innovation. So not starting with a solution, but allowing yourself to be open to, to new ideas, allowing yourself to be proved wrong, um, and having being humble enough to be able to, to take that um, in, in your stride. Uh, an internet connection is gonna be absolutely critical. <laughs> and uh, it seems to be all right in the room at the moment. So that, that's pretty cool. Uh, we're gonna be moving at pace today so we can get through a number of activities to try this stuff out. So we have to be quite sort of punchy as we work. And I'd like you to share um, your ideas and your thoughts and your insights and your, you know, all of this stuff within the room and both outside of the room. So what we're going to be doing is capturing our insights and our ideas and sharing them on Twitter. So ideally, I'd like to capture these as short clips of video. So we want one person per table who is able to shoot some video on their camera and upload it to Twitter with the hashtags Induction Insights and LT19. So this is part of the activities. You'll have these up on the screens when we get to that, that part. So um, if you're, what we'll do, we'll just take a minute to decide, if you can decide on your tables who's gonna be shooting the video and doing the upload. The good news for you is, if that is you, it means you're not the ones being videoed. So uh, if you particularly don't want to be videoed, I suggest you put yourself forward for videoing. So I'll just give you a, a minute just to decide who's doing that on your table, please. Okay, great. So has everybody decided? Have you worked out who's going to be your uh, designated videographer and, uh, and tweeter? It's great. It's amazing when people volunteer like that, isn't it? Just wonderful to see. So proactive. Um, so we start with some basics. Uh, what, what is uh, innovation? Um, I mean, we've all got a pretty good idea of it, I think, but it's useful just to kind of reconfirm that. So um, is it loads of trendy people? hanging out in like a uh, kind of really cool looking office uh, with beards, well, on the men at least. Uh, men, you don't, you don't wear socks with your shoes anymore. This is another key ingredient to innovation. I hope you're taking notes on this. Um, well, it kind of, it, it can be. It, it, it can be in some cases. Um, according to Google, so uh, this is what Google says. Um, it's about making changes in something established especially by introducing new methods, ideas, or products. So introducing something new, so yeah, that's great. A nice thing I notice about this, when you do a Google search on definitions, it gives you this, which is, um, it's grayed out a little bit, but this gives you the usage, the mentions of the term innovate over time. So as you'd expect, innovation is, is very much the thing at the moment, so around the far end of the timeline, lots of uses of, uh, of innovation, but interestingly around kind of 1800s to 1860, a lot of use of it then. Why do you think that might be? What happened then? Industrial Revolution, exactly. And then, of course, at the end, we've got our, our digital revolution, which we're, we're in the thick of, really. But I thought that was just, uh, just a quite interesting insight into it's not, we think of it as this really new contemporary thing, but it's been used very heavily many years ago. So using, using the word innovation too much. I mean, I'll give you my definition of innovation. What I've discovered, innovation isn't really a sexy or new thing whatsoever. It's just a human-centered, data-driven design process. It's just good design. So something I should have said at the start, which I forgot to, was um, the, the reason that we have our approach to design is because of how I learned design. So I've always, I've always been a designer. I've always designed things, even before I studied it. And... Uh, you know, went through college at university, I studied engineering design and appropriate technology. So this is essentially open source engineering for developing countries. So designing and building things out of locally available materials using the tooling that they'd have in a workshop there and the skills that the local workers would have. So rather than making something in the West, 
which works amazingly, and then it breaks, and then cannot be fixed. It's kind of compromising on things, making it from what, what they've got. And that's kind of digitally what, what we do now as a, as a company. But all of this stuff around um, what I've realized with innovation and working with innovation teams in some of the like, biggest organizations in the world, and they've taken me through their innovation process, it's, a, it's basically an engineering design process. We've been working this way for hundreds of years. Understand the problem, understand the people, understand the behaviors, generate ideas, test ideas, iterate and move through that. So it's not necessarily the trendy young things in the socks and the beard, lack of socks and beards. Um, it is something which is, you know, it's a process that you follow through. I also love that great quote by um, John Cleese about creativity. So creativity isn't a talent, it's a process. And I feel very much the same about innovation. It's, it's a process. So we're going to learn a bit about that today so you can, you can use it yourself. I mean, this looks more complicated than it is. It's not actually that complicated. You've essentially got a research phase here. So you explore the design problem. You start to understand, understand that. You start to learn about the audience. And what happens when you're in this phase is each feeds into the other. Because you'll have an initial idea of, of what the problem is. But then as you understand the audience, quite often, your definition of that problem changes. And then that may then change what you do to investigate the audience. So you kind of work, you cycle through this for a while in this research phase. You then move into your design phase where hopefully you've, you've defined what the design problem is. So you can use uh, kind of design um, question statements um, to, to do that. And you will have just quite naturally generated insights uh, to do that because of immersing yourself here. And it's, it's really important as well that this, this stuff here isn't delegated to, uh, for example, um, people other than the actual designers and the people that are taking ownership of the project. Because what you need to do is really immerse yourself in this data at a highly detailed level so that you've, you've kind of, you, you are not necessarily understand it, but you're immersed in it. So your thinking is shaped by it. So, you know, one of the things I was thinking, well, we've got sentiment analysis now. That would be a great way to analyze a whole load of user data. Yeah, maybe, but it's not as good as actually reading through it all. So um, we then, once we've defined our problem and we've generated some insights, uh, we can generate uh, some possible solutions. So usually these are, they're, they're pretty easy to, to generate, really, if you've, if you've done the preparation work. You'll then test these with an audience. So this could be through prototyping or discussing things with them or drawing things up. Um, and then these will then, depending on how your testing goes, will usually drive you back to one of the earlier stages. So um, if you're pretty much on the money, then it's just going to cause you to refine what you've done a little bit and kind of cycle around here. But what you may find is you test it with the audience, and they go, well, what the hell is this thing that you've put together? And you realize that actually maybe we didn't understand the audience well enough. We need to loop back to here. Maybe you're going to get some insights out of the users, actually getting their hands onto your prototypes. Maybe it leads you to redefine the design problem. So you kind of, although it is a, it's a linear process in some respects, you do kind of loop back through it. And then we move into, when we're, we're happy that we've reached the stage that, yes, this is right for the audience, we're then documenting our solution so that it can be built. We develop, we deploy, but then we evaluate, and then you iterate and improve it. So this, this kind of cycle continues onwards. So this is, if you're in the sort of agile session earlier on, this is all pretty standard stuff. You know, it's being, people talk about it as um, like design thinking now, that's a sort of sexy, sexy term, and uh, agile and all that kind of good stuff. This is, this is just good engineering design. It's how it's, how it's always been. So the bits in green are the bits that you're going to experience part of today. So uh, that was why I colored those green. So we're going to explore the design problem. We're going to understand the audience. We're going to generate some insights, generate and hopefully refine some possible solutions as well. So this is the reason why I asked you to be in even numbers on tables. So I'd like you to spend 10 minutes now um, asking these, so pair up with the person next to you and ask these questions of them. So if you've brought laptops or, or things like that, this is where you can use those to capture their responses uh, to these three questions. So we like things that are really kind of simple processes that give you useful data. So we're not ones that go, we've got this amazing magical process that we've came up with. And all you have to do is just follow the process. And this amazing stuff comes out. We like simple processes that getting the right people asking the right questions yields the right results. So this is, this is one of those. So whatever project we're trying to do, so we ask the audience, what worked? What did you like about it? As simple as that. 
Number two, what didn't work, what didn't you like? And number three, what might have improved your experience of it so that you're capturing some of their ideas? So I'd like you to, when you capture their, um, their responses to these questions, and you'll spend five minutes each, so first of all, five minutes asking to one person, then I'll let you know that's five minutes up, switch and ask the questions round. As you're recording what they're saying, try to kind of capture the essence of it as it's coming from them. Try not to put your interpretation on it at this stage, but just to kind of capture it. You might find it easier to write quotes or just to kind of summarize, but it needs to come from them. So we're going to spend five minutes doing that one way and then five minutes the next. So off you go. Okay, brilliant. Thank you, everybody. So I, I hope that you've, uh, you've gathered a whole load of raw data there. And probably what will have started to happen is already ideas and insights are starting to, to form, which is complete, completely normal. But I hope that's... Um, I did a similar... Um, activity at a conference out in uh, Berlin, but it was about kind of understanding your users' preferences in general. And I did an activity with this guy called Thomas, and it was the first time we'd met. And in a 20-minute activity, he worked out something about me, which took me approximately 42 years to realize myself. <laughs> and, and he said I'd done the same thing in uh, 36, well, it took him 36 years, because he was a bit younger. So, you know, just asking the right questions and listening and trying to listen with your filters off, um, it, it's just a, it's a really good skill to, to try and develop. So, the next thing that we'll do is now, on your tables, I want you to spend 10 minutes sharing the findings that you've had from your one-to-one your -one interviews you've done. And I want you to look for what are the patterns and the common threads and the commonalities that are coming out, because from those will come the insights. So, we're going to spend 10 minutes doing that, and then what I'll do is give you five minutes to record your videos of it. So the videographer and whoever is going to be on, on camera, you can go out there into the quiet space um, and record so you don't get lots of background noise. Um, so you should be able to spread out there. And tweet so that all this stuff comes out. And then the rest of you that are in the room, you can, you can tweet just in text because I don't want, if everybody does video, the internet's just going to fall over. So if we have one video per table, and then the rest can kind of share their insights as tweets, and then all of this will go into that kind of document blog thing, whatever it is we put together. So just to recap, 10 minutes now to discuss on your tables, look for the themes, and capture the insights, and then we'll have five minutes to basically record and broadcast those. So I'll let you know when 10 minutes is up. OK, so um, thanks, everybody, for doing that and pooling your ideas. So I was really interested to come around and speak to the different tables and listen and see where there were things that were in common uh, and some tables where things were quite different and there wasn't a lot in common. But when you think about it, we've actually got quite a um, small uh, data set that you're calling on, on in your table. So it's not unusual, uh, it's not uh, uh, unexpected that on some tables there wasn't that much that was in common, but great, great when there is as well. So what I'd like you to do now then, so your designated uh, videographer who's going to shoot the video, um, take a uh, willing or unwilling victim outside um, and just to record like a maximum of one minute with just uh, your key insights, um, one insight or two insights, whatever you can capture in a minute and then share that on Twitter using our hashtags. And those of you left in the room here, if you'd like to, it would be fantastic if you could share some of your insights just as text so the internet doesn't fall over on Twitter as well. Um, otherwise, just have a chat. So um, we'll give you five minutes just to capture those videos and then come back into the room. That would be brilliant. But yeah, please, please do tweet that um, using our, our hashtags. Because as I say, we'll pull all this stuff together. Obviously, you can search by the hashtags and you can use this, all these great insights as input into your, into your projects, into your inductions. So we're just handing out um, some more data for you. So just to explain what this is, we put, we put out a, um, a survey on Twitter asking those same three questions ahead of the, um, ahead of the conference. We asked people to fill those in with, with free text. So what you're getting on your tables now is the raw data from those responses. So we're kind of bringing in like another, another data set. So, I mean, don't feel that you need to read through it all, you know, it's kind of scan through it. But what, what we've done here is we've just put together word clouds of that free text. Now, we only had uh, 13 respondents, one, three respondents. So there's not like a huge amount of text for that. 
but you can see, I think I've put all three of the, the word clouds in here, but some of them are more useful than others. So this is what, what worked. But it's interesting. Look at how many words here are related to um, interacting with people. So shadowing, buddy, people, team, you know, those, those tend to be the, the really big ones. So with a bigger data set of free text, just using, this is just a free Wordle tool uh, online, you can put all of that free text in and it can kind of give you, give you some kind of snapshot insights. Um, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't read through the responses. You know, that's really important to you as, as a designer, as an input, but it gives you a bit of a snapshot. The answers to the other two questions were kind of less, um, less kind of decisive. You know, this one is what didn't work, so you can see it's lots of information, it's boring, um, but there's not a great deal more that you can kind of glean from that. And I think what might help, um, yeah, there wasn't, there wasn't enough commonality in the answers to get much. But imagine if instead of 13 people, it was 130 or, or more, then this, it begins to be a, it's non-scientific, but it's a, it's a kind of useful way to, to look at the data. So I hope that's given you a sense of how, what, what you can learn in a very short space of time. Um, let me just check. Yeah, in fact, we'll, we'll move on to, we'll, we'll have time for, for questions at the end, but I'm, I'm keen that you spend some time generating ideas as well. So I'm going to ask you to do this, first of all, individually. So not speaking to other people, but just doing it yourself based on the, the data that you've analysed, the insights that you've shared, the insights that you've heard, and just try to come up with a, a few, one or more ideas that might help with induction. The important word here is might. So we're not saying it definitely will. What we want to do here is kind of open up the range of suggestions that, that you might make. Why do you think we're just doing that individually, initially? Why do you think we're doing that? Any ideas? <laughs> hey, you can read as well. <laughs> 10 out of 10. So um, people like me, who are, who are um, quite willing to put their ideas forward, um, will monopolize the table. <laughs> and what I find is the people who are often the best designers are the quite reflective ones. So the idea here is that we give time for the people who are the quiet reflective ones to get their ideas down. And we also slow up the ones that will just go, idea, 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 idea. So we're going to take five minutes and just come up with a few ideas. And they can be as wacky as you want, as weird as you want. Um, uh, and we'll just do that individually, OK? So just five minutes to do that, please. OK, brilliant. Thank you, everybody. So quite often when we do this with our customers, the people that we're working with, we get them just to go away, you know, take themselves off, go for a walk, like movement really helps, going for a walk and generating some ideas. Even better if you can allow several days or weeks for this. So. Um, John Cleese, I love Monty Python, John Cleese was said, said a, a great way to, um, uh, that he would always outperform some of the other Pythons in terms of writing the best sketches. And he described his process for doing that, and that was to immerse himself in the problem or the, or the kind of idea, as, as he described it, and then to back off and let your mind just li lightly rest against it, and then let the ideas come and just catch them as they come. And then the fact that he was prepared to do that for longer than he, the other writers were, he would consistently write the, the funniest sketches. So it is a, it's a, so we, we're kind of rushing through it here and kind of forcing it, but I hope that you get how you can, you can take this stuff away. So what I'll, I'm keen for you to do now, which should come as no surprise, is to now share your ideas on the table. And let's see an, an idea, you know, which ideas really resonate. Uh, with the table, so the things that you think, oh, that's awesome, we've got to do that, it's a brilliant idea. And what I'd like you to do then is just once again, please capture that in a tweet. So video would be wonderful. So all of you that shot the video are my favorite people in the world, absolutely brilliant. Um, or if you want to tweet that as well, that, that's fine as well. Can I have your flip chart? Uh, yes, please do, yeah. Pl feel free to use a flip chart if that helps. But what we'll do, as I mentioned at the start, we'll put all of this together into like a blog posting for you all so that we've captured all, all of those ideas. So we'll take 10 minutes to do that, including shooting the videos, please. So then we've got five minutes for questions and reflections at the end, if that's all right. So I'll give you 10 minutes now. Share your ideas on the table. Capture one or two really great ones and, and share them, please. 
So that is brilliant. Thank you, thank you so much, everybody, for, for doing that. So I, do, I always see my job at these things is just to get all of you really talented, interesting people with loads of experience and great ideas kind of talking to each other like around a topic. And it's just we all win because that stuff gets shared. So we've just got a few minutes left before the end, but just really interested in kind of your uh, reflections back on, on how that felt uh, going through that process. Any kind of amazing, great ideas for induction that you've just heard that you've just thought were absolute killers? Or, or any questions that you've got as well? We've got a few minutes for those. So yeah, over to you guys. Anybody got any questions, reflections? <laughs> Insights they feel they need to share? I think it's on, yeah. Um, so from my, my perspective, a few things that I actually liked is um, uh, we actually had a discussion or a recommendation from someone that said we actually want to introduce uh, virtual reality, for example, to uh, show the, the process or production of one of our products. Ah. And in my opinion, I think that's a very nice idea because it adds something to the experience. Hmm. Um, I think the overall discussion we had in general, I, I think we can basically say we also agree upon with that as well is... Um, don't focus that much on the content, but focus more on the experience you're trying to sell to your employees. Mm. Uh, try to make it more fun, more engaging, uh, more encouraging. Um, mm. I think that I think that was a nice, nice yeah. eyes op uh, nice eye opener for yeah. us. Yeah, I like that. Design the experience, not the content. I think that's a really nice way to think of it. Any other reflections on either ideas or reflections on the process? I think there's a gentleman. Uh, we just go with the gentleman there first, then we'll come to you after. Is that okay? Yeah. Is that on? Just quick insight from our table then. So I noticed how much of our discussion around what's good is predicated on relationships. Ah. So relationships with peers who are just starting or, or people in different roles who are just starting, as well as relationship with the organization and its vision and values. Hmm. Uh, and it's a two-way relationship as well. So why are we here? Yeah. Why should I buy into this? What do you, how are you demonstrating yeah, that yeah. you're going to buy into me as well? So designing a program that builds relationships with your peers and with the organization. Yeah, I love that. And uh, the gentleman here. Yes, um, we came up here with the um, aspect that you have to think of that sometimes the uh, culture or uh, language can be very important in mm. whether or not an induction can be very successful in one country with one group of uh, new hires, but can be very uh, uh. not funny or even dangerous in, uh. in other regions. So localizing, basically, localizing your induction, making sure it's, it's right. Brilliant. Well, I'm really conscious that I'm holding you up from the free bar. So if, is there another? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just before you all go, I have a really important message. About before the free Before we bar. thank Rob. Um, you're all invited to the conference drinks reception, which will be held on level two from five until six. Then they're hosting networking at the Fox, which is down the stairs just outside the west entrance until eight. If you want to go to that, you have to pick up an invitation card from the reception desk on the ground floor. So you do need an invitation card if you want to go to that. One last, three short questions from me. Yeah. If you're about to go back to work and completely revamp your induction, do something really new, please stand up and stay standing. Ah, if you're going to go back good. and do something Brilliant. new, please stand up and, yep, yeah, fantastic. <laughs> if you, well done. Yeah, thank you. If That's you've awesome. got some new ideas that you're going to experiment with, try, put forward, then please stand up. Uh. <laughs> if you need a bit more time to reflect, to think, to prepare, to assess it, and maybe then think about it, please stand up. So That's brilliant. That's the power of the group, that is. That's the power of the group. Can I ask you all to give Rob a very big round of applause? Oh, well, thank you all. You're absolutely awesome. <laughs>